All right, let's see how this goes. So this is going to be my first attempt at the nutrition post slash webinar that we were talking about. And I thought I'd start with something that um, I feel like I've said to everyone, but maybe haven't hit home with some, because this is the basis of just about everything that we do from a nutrition standpoint. Some of these rules I learned in school through experience, most of it through experience. Uh, and this is literally how I live my life, which has helped me build my metabolism to a point where literally I feel like I can get away with murder with my meals and stay in the same shape that I am. And that's earned over time. But this is how I got there. And these are the rules I follow day to day to be able to stay there. So check it out. These are your fat burning rules to live by. Um, there's many variations of this. You can argue for any direction. I'm happy to answer questions beyond this, but I'm going to share this document with you guys as well so that you'll have both resources. Now, first is eating habits, right? So timing. To me, timing is not as important as quality, right? Quality and quantity speak far more. And I say this because when I was in college, I ate all of my calories. I mean, all of them, 3000 calories at breakfast. And then lunch was cheese and crackers. Dinner was a protein shake. And that was my life for like four years. And I walked around at five and a half percent body fat. It was awesome, right? But not everyone can do that. It is an option though. So here are the rules I suggest for you. One, eat within one hour of waking. This is because your mom was right. You need to break the fast breakfast, right? The point is most people eat quite a while before they go to bed, right? Let's say at least two hours. And then let's say you sleep for eight hours. You're at 10 hours. Then you don't eat till lunchtime. You literally fasted for 15 hours. You know what that causes? Yeah, you may get some less inflammation in your gut, but what you're really doing is you're pumping out stress hormones like adrenaline and cortisol, which cause issues with energy, issues with muscle retention, and some serious issues when it comes to fat burning in general. You can beat this system but it takes a lot of consistency. So if you want something that's balanced and doable long-term, that's my suggestion. Rule two, never eat without protein. This is something we talk about a lot. And I'm not saying that you ever have to sit down and just eat a chicken breast at nine in the morning. It doesn't have to be that way. But the way I say it is the idea of having a banana as a snack, not a good plan. Banana is a healthy food. It's a wellness food, but it's not necessarily a fitness food. And those two worlds overlap, but they're clearly not the same, right? Olive oil is healthy, but if you drink a bunch of it, you're going to get fat. It's just the nature of the game because it's so high calorie. So by never eating without a protein, instead of just having a banana, if you had a banana and turkey, a banana and a protein shake, the protein is going to slow down how fast the carbohydrates in the banana digest. And what that means for you is lower blood sugar, which means lower insulin response, which means lower fat storage, right? So if you in general want to just not store as much fat, eating protein with your snacks or with any meal for that matter will make a difference. Part two in this is that protein is more difficult for your body to break down. So there is a thermogenic effect. More energy is used to break it down. Your internal body temperature goes up. You burn more calories throughout the day. That is why trainers and nutritionists alike love protein, right? Next, Always eat within 30 minutes post-workout. Again, you can find science for all of this. Here's my two cents. I feel my best and have gotten the best results when I'm consistent about this. Now, I'm going to put bullet points here on eating within 30 minutes post-workout. Specifically, this should be a lean protein and sugary carbs. No fat. Here's why. When you are coming off of a workout, you've exhausted your blood sugars. You've exhausted your natural energy stores called glycogen. That's your carbohydrates in your body. And your body is looking for sources of energy. Now, the more athletic you are, the more efficient it becomes at burning fat. The less athletic you are now, the more likely it is your body is breaking down lean muscle tissue because it's an easier source for it to access. Now that's trainable over time. But for right now, if within that 30 minutes, when you are at your peak, your blood pressure is up, your blood is flowing faster, your adrenaline and cortisol is pumping, your insulin is high, all of these things, all of these hormonal things are going on. When you consume very lean protein, even preferably a broken down protein, which would be like a protein powder, and sugary carbs, so think like honey, fruit, if you're feeling it, maybe some gummy bears, what happens? You emphasize that hormone response. So priority one, your body will use those carbohydrates, those sugars, to replenish natural energy stores, because that means you can run from the lion in an hour from now, right? That's why it does that. 
Part two, when those stores fill faster, those natural energy stores fill faster, your protein can do what it's supposed to do. You've spiked that natural hormonal response and your protein will get delivered to the muscles way faster, way more efficiently and be the source of faster recovery. The faster you recover, the more responsive your body gets and the better results you get, right? Working out's jacked up. It's literally just micro tears, lots of internal bleeding. That's why working out hurts. But the faster you can repair that, the more responsive your body will be, okay? When you consume fats, it slows digestion. So let's say that post-workout meal was protein powder. And because it is pre-digested, it just gets to the muscles even faster than eating like chicken. But let's say that meal is protein powder, a banana, and peanut butter. Peanut butter slows digestion, which means slower response from the banana, slower delivery of the protein, right? If you pull that peanut butter out, you can now speed that process up, which means faster recovery, okay? That's your goal here. So always eat within 30 minutes post-workout for the best results, and you won't get uh, that feeling like you got hit by a truck as often, okay? Um, this one is a big one for me. So if you've been working with us for a while, you know this one. Not eat within, eat enough calories per day. This is huge. I'll try not to ramble on this one. If you chronically undereat, let's say your body at its weight, height, and age needs 2,000 calories, and you chronically eat 1,300 calories, yes, you will lose weight for a period of time, but it will come to a brutal screeching halt. Here's why. Your body's very protective. When you're losing that weight, your body doesn't have the carbohydrate sources that it needs consistently. So what does it do? The same thing it does when it works out. It tries to draw from lean muscle tissue, right? Muscle is calorie consuming. It burns more calories, which is how a little guy like me eats a lot of calories, right? I contain muscle. When that happens, your body will preserve itself by slowly dropping the necessary amount of calories it needs per day. So instead of burning 2000 like it's supposed to, in a month from now, it burns 1800 and then 1500 and then 1300. And now you're at this mean plateau. And for you to lose weight, you feel like you have to eat a thousand calories a day. So you're just slowly dying. You're withering away. You're not losing weight. You're not burning fat. You're dying. <laughs> what you need to do is train your metabolism back up to where it needs to be. You do this through consistency. So the best way to do this, don't adjust for your workouts. Eat three meals. And I'm going to say three meals and one to two snacks. I don't care how you space them out, but that calorie content per day will then start to ramp your metabolism back up. Your body will adjust to consuming 2000 calories again. And the next time you make a calorie drop for let's say a month or two at a time, you will burn more fat because your metabolism is higher. Now you can train this through multiple ways, right? We can train this through treats, uh, specific meal timing, cheat meals. That's how we can keep this process working consistently, right? Um, but most importantly is eating enough calories per day. The biggest mistake that people actually make here rather than chronic dieting is they binge. And by binge, I mean, I got too busy, so I didn't eat. And then I had a big meal, so I felt guilty, so I skipped breakfast. And the list goes on and the wave continues and your body just fluctuates that same three to five pounds over and over and over. And you can't figure out why you can't lose weight. This is why. This is why I'm so against calories in, calories out. Because if that were the case, I would live on peanut butter cups. I'd eat five a day. We'd call it a day. It'd be awesome. I'd be ripped. That's not how it works, right? Quality and quantity matter over a consistent matter of time, okay? So um, in this, we can dive into more specifics as to like why you never eat without a protein beyond that, um, eating within an hour of waking up, that kind of thing. Next, I'm going to say drink water. And I'm not even going to put... Uh, a number on this. You'll hear a gallon, you'll hear 60 ounces, you'll hear ounce per pound, all these things. I just care that you drink water. So the way I usually list this on a meal plan is 12 to 16 ounces per meal. Literally a, a, a bottle or a glass or half of your water bottle at every meal. Reason being, water is obviously the main source of most things in your body. You're like 90% water, right? But to make this drive home, when you consume a calorie, how does that calorie become energy, right? I eat a piece of bread. That bread has to break down into the calories that makes it up to go to all the muscles and do all the things, right? That process, that breakdown process is called hydrolysis, which at its root literally means add water. No water, no calorie breakdown. No water, no fat burning, right? 
This is a major factor because your body is so good, so good at adaptation that if you are like a one cup of water a day guy, girl, whatever, <laughs> then your body will adjust for that and you just won't see the results that you need to. This also relates to metabolic uh, abilities, more water, faster metabolism. It is the nature of the beast. The faster things can move in your body, the faster you can expel the things that don't belong in your body, the byproducts of breaking down calories, the better off you will be. Cool? These are my top five. Now we can get into some more, right? Others, avoid consuming fat and carbs together. This kind of falls under that same rule that we're using from a post-workout standpoint. But I say it this way because usually when I write a meal plan, I include fat throughout the day. But what I try to exclude in those meal plans is high amounts of fats and carbs together, right? So let's go to a wellness, a healthy, highly packed meal, oatmeal and peanut butter. A single cup of oatmeal is going to be almost 60 grams of carbs. Two tablespoons of peanut butter, which we all eat more than that, is going to be almost 20 grams of fat. That together, carbs and fat, are your body's top choices for energy throughout the day, no matter what your heart rate, right? So when you consume them together, it is a caloric bomb of energy. So the only time you should be eating that is when you are going to have a huge gap in your day. Like you're eating the big breakfast, you're going to work out, you're running around, and then you're not gonna have lunch till 4 p.m. Something like that, this would make sense because you will have a more consistent flow of energy. This was one of my favorite pre-workout meals leading into paintball tournaments, which was where I came from, my history. Um, if you are trying to burn fat, lose weight in general, avoiding those combinations makes way more sense. So having peanut butter in your protein shake makes way more sense than having it in your oatmeal. Cool? Simple tricks that can start to kind of push the ball forward without major changes. And I write the rules this way because these things are something that you could follow anywhere, anytime, no matter the quality of the food, you can start to sway in the right direction just by following some of these tricks. Okay. Um, the next one that I would choose is eat protein every three to four hours. So this is not a perfect rule, but it's an optimal rule, right? We're talking about like, I'm trying to get the edge and I have the ability to do this. This makes sense. Okay. So when you have a consistent flow of protein, you have a consistent flow of amino acids, the things that actually make up protein. And as long as those amino acids are in your system, your body is not going to break down muscle, right? It's called anabolic or catabolic. Anabolic, you are muscle repair, muscle building. Catabolic, you are muscle wasting, right? Those are the definitions. There's no middle ground. Like neutral is failure. Like in the business world, if you're not growing, you're dying right? Now you can, you can sway this and keep your calories down by using the BCAA, right? Branch chain amino acids. So if you don't know, those are three of the super important amino acids that make up a protein. The reason they get made separately in a supplement is because your body uses them in such high quantities in other systems in the body, cell structure, cell repair, energy cycle, muscle repair, right? The list goes on. And those three the names don't matter. Leucine, icing, leucine, valine, right? They don't matter. Uh, those three become important because your body cannot make those amino acids. They are essential. You have to consume them, in, consume them in your diet. And unless you truly have a high protein diet, which high protein to me is a gram or more, sorry, a gram or more per pound of lean body mass, right? So if you're 200 pounds, but you want to weigh 170, if you're not getting at least 170 grams of protein, you're not a high protein diet, in my opinion, right? So a BCAA, when you consume those, they are a zero calorie powder you can add to your water. One, they help people drink more water. They're sweet, right? So they kind of hit that craving. Two, they protect lean muscle. They are the closest to neutral you can get because they create the presence of the breakdown of protein without actually consuming a protein. When you use this, one, if you are working super hard or super long in a workout, putting BCAAs in your water, in your drink, intra-workout during the workout will make a huge difference in muscle wasting, right? So that you can get the most energy expenditure during your workout. Two, big gaps. 
Let's say you're not eating the protein every three to four hours. Breakfast is at 6 a.m. You don't eat lunch till two. That gap, if you just drink BCAAs in your water, you will get better results and you'll feel better. It fills in the energy cycle. You will feel better and it is caffeine free. There's definitely uh, good ones and bad ones on the market. So we can dive into that on another, uh, what are we going to call this, webinar. <laughs> but that will get you started. And it's just something, a really easy tool that you can use, right? Um, under this same realm. And I'm not promoting my stuff right now because I don't want you guys to feel like this is a supplement sale because I've mentioned three supplements already. Um, I'm using this as a tool, right? Multivitamin or green supplement. Include it in your diet. Here's why, Greg can't spell. Uh, your body has a list of priorities, right? And all of these different systems running like a little cycle in your body, right? So let's say this cycle over here is the energy cycle. And this cycle over here is fat burning. Energy is way more important to you and your body than fat burning. So to fill in this energy cycle, let's say you're missing vitamin B and you're low on vitamin B. This thing starts to stagger and not work so well. So fat burning just gets pushed down the priority list and your body will use all of its resources to try to fill that gap. Taking something like a full-blown multivitamin, not, oh, I just take B12. The reason I say that is because when you take a, a singular vitamin, when you microdose a singular thing, there are other things that influence it, how it absorbs, how well it breaks down, all these things. So taking a full-blown multivitamin can fill in those gaps because the amount of calories you'd have to consume to get the micronutrients that you need, the vitamins and minerals, would be higher than the calories you are probably burning, which means you'd have to put on fat to get the micronutrients. Kind of messed up, right? Welcome to the Western diet. Uh, and I say multivitamin or greens because I think they can both efficiently do that process. And the more efficient all these other systems are, the further up the line, fat burning and muscle building can go on the priority list, right? This becomes really important for people who have um, recovering from injuries, people who have uh, gone through very significant crash diets, this starts to become more of a sensitive topic, right? Um, and I did this on a whim, guys. Like I'm going through the things that I present to people on the most regular basis that I see holes in the system, right? One that a lot of you guys have seen to me is no doubles when it comes to macros. So macros are things that provide calories. So if we look at it, it's protein, carbohydrates, fat, and if we're being serious, alcohol. Those are the things that provide calories, right? Um, that is what a macronutrient is. When you double, and when I say double, let's say you had tacos, you had chicken breast, win. You had tortillas, mm, okay. You had beans, you had rice, you had whatever, chips. You had five sources of carbohydrates to one source of protein. So just like when you consume fats and carbs together, you just have this onslaught of energy that your body needs to use or store, right? Um, so avoiding doubles. Like if you just said chicken, beans, and all the toppings, and you skip the rice and tortilla, game on, right? Or you could split the difference and say, hey, I'm going to have a half serving of beans, a half serving of rice and chicken and make my wrap or whatever, right? But little things like that, watching the portion control so that you don't have these massive dumps of double macros will make a huge difference. And that's gonna apply to carbs and fats, not necessarily protein. In this world, people are always consumed with the internet as to how much protein their body can break down at once. I'm sure if you've followed nutrition, you've seen this, there's science in a lot of different directions. Here's my two cents as a nutritionist. Consume as much protein as you possibly can in any single city. The numbers are skewed. Let's say your body can truly only use 30 grams of protein at a time for muscle repair, cellular repair. The other 30 grams that you might have consumed at that same meal are going to make your bowels more consistent, we'll say. <laughs> raise your internal body temperature for fat burning. And in general, protein is super terrible source of energy for your body. It's really hard to convert. 
So your body is less likely to store it as fat and more likely to pass it down the line, right? So you're less likely to gain fat from high protein sources, okay? This is how some of those diets that you've heard of work so well, okay? Um, and I wanna give you number 10, just to give you number 10. If I had to pick one, I'm gonna say carbohydrate timing. So I'm looking for number 10 here, just to give you guys a nice round number. Greg still can't spell. Um, the, the reason I'm going to say this, because I mentioned at the beginning, timing is far less important to me than quality and quantity, right? Carbohydrate timing is stacking your body's favorite source of energy, carbohydrates, around the times that it's most effective, right? Times would include breakfast, which we're going to eat within an hour of waking up. Reason being, your red blood cells and your brain only function on glucose, aka sugar. So consuming carbohydrates in the morning can prevent later crashes in the day, prevent brain fog, prevent energy drop, like all sorts of stuff. So just stacking them at your breakfast is a great idea. Two, I'm going to say pre and post-workout. Pre-workout as a main source of energy to push you so that you can burn more calories so that you can do more in the workout and post-workout so that you can recover faster right? And if you were to only consume carbohydrates at those three times of day, even if two of those are the same, let's say breakfast is your pre-workout, amazing. If you push those carbs to those times, you're going to be way more effective because the last opportunity for you to consume them is dinner right before bed, which is a high energy source when you're about to do the least amount of work, right? You are better off favoring fat content and protein content at night, which a lot of you guys have seen me use this strategy because that's what your body uses at rest. When you are chilling, your body does not utilize carbohydrates as well as it does fat for energy. It takes its time, and that long process of turning fat into energy becomes more efficient. When you're hauling ass and when you're picking up weights, your body's using carbohydrates. That's how they get the concept of the fat burning zone. And I put it in quotes. Again, I'll explain that another day. But carbohydrate timing can be a great way to increase fat burning without decreasing calorie content in general, right? So you don't have to starve and you can keep getting results. So I hope this is a great launching point for you guys as a starter for, okay, I don't have my meal plan ready. I'm going out to eat. I'm on vacation, whatever it is. And you can start to apply these rules to your day without having to think too hard about your next meal. Stay tuned for more and we'll get more of these in.